Welcome to Positive Free School Tips. I'm Cindy. This video is for all you new teachers that are heading into the classroom or have been in the classroom for just a short while and are feeling like you need just a few tricks of the trade to help you get through your day. So that's what I have to offer you today with this video. I remember being a first time teacher and just feeling sometimes at a loss and wishing that I had some sort of magic that I could sprinkle on myself or a magic dust I could sprinkle on the children because sometimes it just felt overwhelming and out of control. So here are just a few things that you can do that are quick, that are easy, that you can throw together really quickly or do with the children very easily that'll help you get through and survive your first year in a preschool setting. So here we go. One of the things that I did as a young teacher and still do to this day is to sing this little song. Um, it's very simple, but it helps get the children's attention and it gets them sitting and looking at you. So it's great before a story time when you want the children to be on the carpet and you're getting ready to read a story. It's great in, the, in a transition if the children are cleaning up and some are coming to the carpet and you need the children on the carpet to be sitting and waiting for the children coming um, to the carpet that, have, that are currently cleaning up. And it's just really quick, it's really easy. What you're gonna do is look around at the to see who is sitting the way you want them to. And that can be crisscross applesauce hands in the lap, or um, some people don't mind if they're sitting on their feet. Whatever you think is an appropriate way for the children to sit is what you're looking for. And you call that child by name and you sing their name in this song. It goes like this. I like the way that Ryan's sitting. And then you can look for another child that's doing a good job and sing their name. I like the way that Mary's sitting. I like the way that Jason's sitting. Can you sit like they are? And then you just sing it again. And what happens is the children realize that you are singing names and they want their name to be sung. So they quick scurry to to the carpet to, to sit so that you can sing their name. And sometimes I'll have a child, you know, sort of call out, well, you didn't sing my name. And then I just tell them, well, if you sit crisscross applesauce and put your hands in your lap, I'll sing your name. Of course I do. And then I sing their name as soon as they sit down. It works like magic. And sometimes you just need something that you can pull out of your sleeve really quick to get the children's attention. Once you have their attention, then you can quickly move on to whatever it is you need them to do next. Sometimes I sing all of the children's names. Sometimes I just quickly sing one verse really quickly. I did do a video where I go into a little bit more explanation about that, about the song. I will link that below if you want to look at that and get a little bit more information on that particular song. It's pretty simple, but um, there's that. I'm telling you, it'll save your life. So that's the first trick I have for you. Another trick, sort of at the same time of day, when you need to get information to the children and they're either standing in line to go outside or they're on the carpet. So they're all sort of together. You're, you're not going to do this if the children are all spread out through the classroom at centers or, you know, doing small group centers or something like that when they're kind of all together. Um, and all you're going to do, it sounds so simple. I'm telling you it works, is you're going to start to talk to them in a whisper. And what I do is I lean forward to the students and I say, I have really important information for you. And then I kind of wait. And then when I get their attention, I'll be like, oh, oh, this is really imp important information for you to have. Are you ready? 
and I act like it's almost a secret. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Are you ready? I need you to, oh, we have to be quiet. I'm going to tell you, but we have to be really quiet. Um, and, and then I just tell them what it is I'm going to tell them for that next transition. It might be, it's time for everybody to line up to go outside. You need to line up very quickly. Or it's time for everyone to sit down for lunch. I mean, it doesn't have to be any big secret. It's just sort of that fun anticipation um, of the children waiting to see what you're going to say because they think it's something really super top secret. Um, and the other thing is what, you, what happens in the classroom often is the children are talking and then the teacher raises her voice over the children so the children can hear her and in hopes to get their attention. Well, that just makes it louder. So the children are talking have to talk a little bit louder because now the teacher is talking louder. It tends to be this climax and just increase in volume instead of the opposite. So just try a whisper voice sometime. Act like it's something very important that you need to share with your students. I'm telling you, they're going to be interested and they're going to listen. So there's just something quick and easy and simple that you can do that will help get through your day. One of the other things that I think is very important for a new teacher to have is just a few, I'm going to give two examples of two games that you can do quickly if you need some time to kill, if you, the activity that you plan fell apart and now it is not your turn to go out on the playground for another 15 minutes and you've got to come up with something very quickly to do with the children. One of them, you don't need any materials. And I do this cute little, I, it's just a, some, I'm going to call it a game. I just sort of make it up as I go along. But I describe what it is I want the children to do. So if um, we're sitting on the carpet and you're looking to play a game, you would say, if you are sitting on the carpet, crisscross applesauce and your hands are in your lap, scratch your head. And then you just have everybody scratch your head. And then I do the exact same, same thing again. And I make it silly. If you are sitting on the carpet, crisscross applesauce, hands in your lap, put a bubble in your mouth and pop it two times. <laughs> silly. And just go on and on. If you need more time to kill, what I do is after I do a few, then I look at a student that's doing what I want them to do. And I say, if you are sitting crisscross applesauce, hands in your lap, let's do what Jacob tells us to do. And if they're sitting down, I always say, well, Jacob, we have to stay on our bottoms so we can shake our hands. We can check our heads. What would you like the class to do? So then he tells the class what he wants them to do. And then everybody follows along. And then I give children turns. Um, it's a quick, easy time filler. Um, if they're standing in line to go outside, sometimes, uh, you know, you might be lining up to go get lunch and then you look and see the lunch isn't set out yet and you need to kill some time. I use that same game. If you are standing in line with your hands at your side, put your hands on your hips and do a little dance um, and just give several little commands, silly little commands. Um, they do it. It's fun and it's going to give you a little bit of extra time without losing control of the group. I have a video about um, some other sort of games and transitions that you can play, and I'll link those below too. The second game that I have, which I have a video for, and I'll link that below, um, is Doggy Doggy Where's Your Bone. You do need uh, materials for this game. What I use is just a block, one of the round blocks. You could use a square block, any any block will do, um, and I just get it from the block corner. And you have this children sit around in the circle. One person is the dog. I like this game because you can play it inside and outside. And you identify one person as the dog. They come in and they close their eyes and lay down like they're sleeping. Now, the rest of the children, while the dog's eyes are closed, you give the bone, the block, to one child. 
And then all the children hide their hands behind their back. And then the chant I use is, Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it and ran away home. Wake up, doggy, and find your bone. So the dog wakes up. Everybody keeps their hands behind their back. The one child has the bone hiding behind their back. And then the little doggy takes turns barking at all the children. And when the doggy barks at the child, the children show their hands to see if the, the they have the bone or not. Um, it's a fun little game. And then whoever has the bone, I let them be the doggy. And then he goes to sleep. And then I give the bone to somebody else. And you can play that so that everybody has a turn. It's quick and easy. It's super cute. So those are the two games. Just quick and easy games to um, that you can do to kill some time. Save your life. One of the other things that I think is really important to remember when you are a new teacher is that when you are addressing the children, to always be sure you are addressing them by telling them exactly what it is you want them to do and not by telling them what you don't want them to do. So if a child is running around the room, instead of saying, don't run around the room, which is you're telling them what it is you don't want them to do. Instead, put it in positive terms of what it is you want them to do. So an example for that would be, use your walking feet. My favorite example is always, don't stand on the table. Because what you're doing is saying what you don't want them to do. You're not giving the child a direction on what it is they're supposed to be doing. So instead you say, put your feet on the floor. It's very clear. It's very direct. They know exactly what it is you want them to do. It's really kind of a different way to sort of address children and think about the way you address them, but it is a game changer. It works great. Um, and it's just sort of a habit that you have to practice and get used to doing. So those are just some things that I hope, if you are a new teacher, you find helpful and things that you can do without too much fuss or muss and uh, help you get through your day, help with transitions, help you keep control of the classroom, make it a happy day for you, a happy day for your little ones. So thank you for tuning in. If anybody else has good ideas or tricks that they did that really helped them get through that first year of teaching, please feel free to comment below. I think that we are just a little preschool community, and I would love to share that with everybody that tunes in. Thank you so much. If you do like these videos, please subscribe, comment, or like. I'd appreciate your support. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, have a great day and have a great preschool day.